see. Oh, one more time. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now But now I see In that third verse now <clears throat> Through many dangerous toils and sneers Thank God for the victory they have His grace hath brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. Oh, is that your testimony this morning? The amen. Amen. Just God's grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Oh, can we give the Lord a hand clap this morning? Are you happy to be here this morning? Praise God. Praise God. God be praised. Thank you, Lord. Oh, praise this wonderful name. The grace of God has brought us this far, and the grace of God will take us on. Hallelujah. Believe us out this. Thou doest well. Amen. The devil believes and trembles. Praise God. But we believe we don't tremble, brother. We vibrate with the power of God, with the grace of God. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. I'd like to invite your attention to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12. Well, everybody, hope you're not too sore this morning, you young people from yesterday. Amen. Because uh, we're ready to do some gymnastics in the spirit. Hope your legs are not too cramped out where you can't shout. Amen. Your arms got hurt, so you can't raise it up. Amen. So praise God. Book of Ecclesiastes, verse 12. Remember now thy Creator in the days of thy youth, while the, the evil days come not. Train up a child in the way he must go. Praise God. And you have that time. And many of you have had that time, and now you know the evil days are here. Praise God, nor the years dry draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. While the sun, or the light, or the moon, or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain, and the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, and the strong men shall bow themselves, and the grinders cease because they are few. And those that look out of the windows be darkened. And the doors shall be shut in the streets when the sound of the grinding is low. And he shall rise up at the voice of the bird. And all the daughters of music shall be brought low. Also, when they shall be afraid of that which is high, 
and fields shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, desire shall fail, because man goeth to his long home, and the mourners go about the streets. Verse 13, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God, keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. May God have blessed and read him his word. You may be seated. Well, I greet you this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And amen. Praise God. Well, thank you. Amen. Appreciate it. Amen. Amen. It's good to be welcomed. Amen. Wonderful. Yes, sir. Hey, wow. Mucho, mucho, too much. <laughs> Amen. My heart can't take it. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. I appreciate that. And on behalf of the New York City Church, and everyone, we want to welcome all of the young people here and all the pastors that are here and the ministers and the churches and the believers from everywhere. And we have a very special guest this morning, all of our young people. You, you, you are the special guest. This is your meetings. Amen. Are you clapping for one another? Amen. That's wonderful. You are the special guest, not me. You may be seated. Now, normally, uh, Brother Jonathan would be doing this, but uh, he's a youth pastor. But uh, I think he has to speak, I believe. So, therefore, I have to do this here to welcome you here. So, I welcome you. Amen. So, anyway, um, I just... Uh, have to kind of officially do it because um, Brother Jonathan and Brother Joey will be ministering to you this in worship and song or whatever, and Brother Brian, Brother Paul, and uh, there'll be testimonies and, uh, and messages directed by the speakers to you. Amen. 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 Now, and we, amen. We, uh, praise God. Thank you. Amen. Now, we just finished reading Ecclesiastics. Now, I could preach about two hours off of just those few words there about these days and so forth. And what a blessing that you were trained up in the way you should go. So you can recognize your senses is not dull. You know the hours and you know the prophet said it. Those messages is in you. And all you need now is the Holy Ghost to bring it to your remembrance. And many of you received the Holy Ghost and came up preaching and exhorting and testifying. Amen. Praise God. Uh, I like that. Amen. You may be seated. And many of the young people uh, was uh, renegades, rascals in the church. Amen. Church rascals. And now they're believers filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. We appreciate that. See, and so, and many of my seen, Brother Coleman, praise God, I was filled with the Holy Ghost. I've been sealed, and now I'm adding faith and virtue and knowledge and temperance and patience and godliness and brotherly kindness, and I know I shall be adopted. Can you imagine that? You may be seated. You see that there, ministers? Every one of them, they, they know what the, what the inspiration is of Brother Branham, not mine, <laughs> Brother Branham's. They know about the statue of a perfect man, but you can hardly get ministers in the message to even preach it. They're afraid to even preach the statue of a perfect man. Amen. You may be seated. Brother Branham said this is a message on teaching. For to to uh, 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 teach you how to be in that eternal church age. 
And the book has been around, the tape has been around. Amen. So we thank God for that. We thank God just to be inspired to know what seeds to plant in your soul. And realize that this is harvest time. So we thank God for that. So there, um, August 18, 1988, the Holy Spirit gave us a special inspiration and it was directed. Uh, there were three things he said, but uh, this morning here, he spoke to our young people and said there will be a visitation to the young people. Now, young people from New York, is there a visitation going on? I don't have to say anything. Here it is here. Spoken in 1988, and here is the visitation. And not only in New York, everywhere else. Amen. Praise God. Yes, sir. All right. Maybe see the moment. Maybe it has something to do with this. Uh, could be. Amen. I believe so. Amen. Now, you know, while we're here in these meetings here, I believe that we're living so close to the coming of Jesus. Brother Branham said here on the Feast of the Trumpets, page 4, that I have to take uh, advantage of every minute that I have the people together. That's what the prophet said. And he said, we assemble together to fellowship around the, around the word. And there'll come a time soon when this will be just a fond memory. So while we're here this time, we may not be here next year. So brother, if there's a Holy Ghost to be gotten, you get it now. Be like Jacob, praise God. I'll stay here, praise God, until I receive it. You may be seated. It will only be a fond memory, not to dwell on the negative, we know that. But watch that third pull when these things come down. Now we're on a positive, amen. Never mind the negative. Eliminate the negative. Accentuate the positive. And don't, miss, don't mess with Mr. In-Between. Satan. Amen. Don't mess with Satan. Eliminate the negative. Accentuate the positive. Amen? Amen. You may be seated. See, I don't have to turn like that to answer me, amen, because they I know what's behind me. I know who's behind me, brother. Yes, sir. And then they're not gonna pull my coattail either. Amen. Uh, that's enough said now. Amen. Praise the Lord. So now while we're here, open up, loosen up. Amen. Let the angel of the Lord, the light, flood your souls. Amen. Praise God. God be praised. Okay. Maybe seated. Brother Ram said, that is right. These times will be taken away from us. So therefore, we must do all that we know how to do to make this every minute count. So may that be a little uh, foundation for the youth services this morning and the night and right on through. And you know, Brother Branham, uh, speaking to the young people, graduation, come follow me, 1963. He prayed for the young people. He said, now you kids, uh, let's have a little word of prayer, he said. Lord Jesus, we are grateful for this time to know that we assembled here, the young and old and the middle aged. And we have assembled this side of eternity once more to speak about you and about the things that pertain to everlasting life. These young ones sitting in here tonight, some of them are graduating. Some has already graduated. But I realize, Lord, something that happened just a few hours before that great shock or great blast had taken place in the mountain up there north of Tucson. When the angels of the Lord came down, I remember what was said, and especially about the young people. The angel spoke to the prophet about you. You, the special guest, you may be seated. And then, uh, about the, especially to the young people, I pray thee 
Lord, help us to understand. And may I be able to say something to these young folks tonight that will help them along the journey. For Lord, we all need that help at this time. Bless us together. Forgive our sins. And if there be anything that we've done since we've been out here that's displeased you, we pray you forgive us for it. For we realize today that we have no guarantee of tomorrow. We don't know what tomorrow brings. We must be prepared today to meet tomorrow. So that's what it's all about for you to receive the Holy Ghost today, to meet tomorrow. Amen. You may be seated. And Father God, there's only one thing that we know to do this. That's to prepare to see you. For by and by, we realize that we're all going to do it. And we've got to meet it sometime, either in peace as a friend or child, or as an enemy. Far be it, Lord, that we'd be anything else but your own beloved children. Grant these things we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Isn't that a beautiful prayer? Huh? Prayed by the Holy Ghost through the prophet? God veil? Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. Now, I'm not here claiming to know what the angel said to the prophet. But I know one thing. What the angel said to the prophet, he sure put it on these tapes between 63 and 65. And I know another thing. If we preach the things that he put on these tapes... My God, I better get out of here because, brother, I'm anointed to praise God. Amen. If we do it, ministers, pastors, believers, whoever you are, testifiers, is on the tapes. Wrapped in faith lays on the tapes. The angel spoke to the prophet about the young people. Amen. This 30 years ago, a generation is about 40 years. Seven years left to the year 2000 when the new world order is going to party in the year, the, the millennium, as they think, in the pyramid. They're all going to gather there, the whole new world age order. And here we'll be gone long before. Oh, hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? My God, if you saw this morning, you can say, praise the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. You hear what I said? Whatever the angel told the prophet is on these tapes. And if we preach and do these things, there's got to be a young people's visitation. And there is. All right. Praise God. So, maybe seated. So now we thank God in New York City and all the other churches know what happened since uh, February 28th and Lake Champion and up to now. And that's not in my category. That is for them to take care of that. Amen. So now tonight, though, it is a special prayer line. The Holy Spirit spoke in my heart to have a special prayer line for the young people only. You know, and so... I don't want anybody that's kind of old to put on a toupee and say, I'm young. You know what I mean? No, you, you have yours Friday night. Amen. Don't worry about it. It'll be Friday night. Praise the Lord. Amen. Don't, don't slip through there now. The Holy Spirit is standing there. Amen. For the young people only. Amen. So, and our purpose in these two services, I'm almost finished, uh, is to, if it be God's will, amen, and and, and, and up to the Holy Spirit to recreate what happened at Lake Champion. <laughs> Gloria a Dios. Gloria, Gloria, Gloria. Hallelujah. Amen. Wouldn't you want that again? You saw a little taste of it Sunday night? Oh, my. Maybe see it. 
So I feel to have the same ministers that ministered to the young people at Lake Champion to minister here on the prayer line tonight. And I know that from outside of New York, there was Brother Frank Cronkite and Brother Waters to be on the line here tonight with the New York ministry. And now the rest of the ministers, everybody asked, well, what are we supposed to do? I'm going to tell you right now. Amen. Praise God. I know you want to know, well, what shall we do while the young people are getting blessed? Will we, will we be uh, blessed also? Sure you will. God uh, blesses all his children. Amen. There's no need to get nervous or excited. Amen. Praise the Lord. And Brother Branham on the Blushing Prophet at page 15, something so unusual happened. The prophet was speaking such a beautiful message there and did something odd and strange to people. He himself uh, went down to the altar and he confessed all his sins and he said, who would want to join me there? The prophet of God, God veiling the prophet. Amen. You know what he said up on the mountain there? When he's up there and sees God, he feels like nothing. And what an imagine, he looked down in Tucson, and what's down there? All the sin and cursing, adulteries and things going on. What's it like to God? Aren't you happy for the blood? Amen. Praise God. So Brother Ram said, I wonder if you have the courage tonight to meet me here at the altar. The prophet said, meet me here. Let's kneel around here and say, God, be merciful to all of us. We are in need of you. God bless you, lady, is going on. To see these young uh, women come and weep in life before them. They're at the crossroads. They are victim of circumstances. What? Do you realize, old men, when we were boys, our boys have has got 10 times the temptation that we had. Brothers, fathers, whoever you are, then if this is speaking about 1956, almost 40 years ago, what about uh, our boys today? A hundred thousand more temptations because all hell was loose on the earth in 1963. So our boys are facing all hell has been turned loose. But my God, when all hell is turned loose, all heaven is turned loose. Yes, sir. We will not fail. Praise God. We know our God. And we'll do mighty exploits. Because Daniel said, he was told us, shut the book up. Seal it to the end time. And Malachi 4 released that book to us. Praise God. And we know our God. Who he is, his nature, all about him. Amen. You may be seated. And he says, uh, Sister, do you realize that your daughter has ten times the temptation you had when you was a girl? What will her daughter have? Look at the things, the pictures of the devil is a painting. And look at now the things that Prophet told us would be in the streets. And on the TV and the movies and, the, and demons have come up out of hell. And you see them walking, parading around you. It's all kind of get-ups and pants hanging down in the back and every, every kind of a demon. Amen. They come up from hell. And they own these people out here. So we don't hate them. We, we have a burden. Oh, my God. Therefore, the grace of God goes on. So what we need is a travailing. We need a burden. We need a thanksgiving to God. We need a holding on to the horns of the altar and crying, Lord, I'm a man of unclean lips. And Lord, let the coal of fire come from the throne. Send for the moaning women. Back in the Old Testament, let them hold on the altar. Whether it be like Hannah mumbling and old Eli thought she was drunk. Praise God, but she was a praying away for Samuel here. My God, my God. All right, maybe see it. You see it now? I don't have to say no more about it. Oh, how we need to pray. Now, you want to know what you're supposed to do tonight while they come through the prayer line? Oh, how we need to do is pray. Pastors, ministers, who, believers, pray. When you see them come through this prayer line, pray. Don't stare and look at it. Don't look for a nugget or bomb. Pray. Amen. 
Amen. Maybe see that. Now we'll go back to you again, brother. Do you realize we don't pray half as much as our fathers did? Pastor, do you know we don't put as much time on our knees as the pastors before us did? Women, do you realize you don't instruct your daughter and pray with her at night like your mother did you? Then what about it? Who is guilty? We are guilty. There's no way around that we're guilty. Praise God. I'm guilty, but the prophet says I'm guilty of not doing the, the job of God like I should do. I'm confessing it and that I'm wrong. I'm asking God to be merciful to me. I look out here and see the opportunities I have missed because of petty things, little old insignificant things that didn't mean nothing. And not to, uh, to enlarge on what the prophet said here, but what about us, to the, us ministers today and pastors? So what, what are we doing? Are we fooling around with old petty things and this one's ministry, his measure is more than mine, and what am I supposed to do? Or are we praying for the lost souls? Are we burdened? Are we not worrying about these things? Amen. Praise God. Who's got this? Who's the leader? Who ain't the leader? All these old petty things. Who's preaching the thunders? Who ain't preaching the thunders? The thunders is Jesus Christ, brother. Amen. You may be seated. So he said, please forgive me. I repent. Uh, I'm ashamed of myself. Uh, he says, uh, as a gospel minister before you, I repent before God and ask God to forgive me and the church to forgive me for being so dilatory about the work of God. By the grace of God and by the help of God, I'll not listen to what. Now listen to this here. Everyone's trying to tell you something to do. They got a program. In other words, they want to tell you what you're supposed to preach in your church and what you're supposed to do in your conventions. That's their program. Amen. So therefore, but that's not God's program. So we do what God tells us to do in our meetings. If we want to stand, we stand. If we want to shout, we shout. Because there's no minister can put an input into our computer here, praise God. Our computers direct to God. They can keep their programs, and I'll take what we got here. Amen. Maybe seated. They got something for you to do. Nonsense. I know God's program is written out here in the Bible. Uh, and I'm ashamed of myself as a minister of the gospel. One million souls won. I ought to have 10 million souls won. I'm way behind. What about us ministers and believers? What about you? How many souls have you won since you've been in Christ? Christianity just goes from one to another. How many souls have you won since you've been a Christian? If you're not winning souls, you're guilty. You're barren. You have brought shame on the church and the gospel. How many people you get out for Wednesday night prayer meeting? If you're not doing it, you ought to be ashamed of yourself before Christ. You're guilty and your place is at the altar. I invite you to come with me for repentance. My, they say, they say Bro Brother Bram don't speak like that. I just read what he, how he speaks. <laughs> Amen. And then you will bow your heads and keep it bowed a minute. And when I, while I feel my guilt and, and would like to repent, just bow your head, Brother Bram says. And then he kneels at the altar. He said, Lord, page 17, forgive every deacon of this church. Forgive the pastor. Forgive the lay members. Lord, forgive every one of, of all our sins. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive every stranger in our gate. And, and may we feel the impact of the Holy Spirit on our life because we are humble before thee tonight, repenting with all of our heart that you receive us and make us humble, quiet, sanctified, humble people for your service. Grant this blessing, Lord, at the altar we upon give it and bow our head and hearts before thee. In the name of thy son, the Lord Jesus, we ask this. I am thine, O Lord. Give us a key, please. Amen. Along the altar tonight, amen, among my brethren that's up here on the altar, I'm glad to see you tonight. Amen, Brother Joey. Praise God. Amen. I am thine, O Lord. Amen. Shall we stand? There's up here on the altar. I'm glad to see tonight about as many as men as there is women. Usually, the women that can easily break. It's the women that can easily break. Their hearts, there's something about them can easily be touched because of the feminist. They're ladies, and you can sometimes touch them. But I'm so glad to see the Holy Spirit can touch men too and bring them to the altar. Aren't you happy for that? Amen. I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy voice and it told thy love to me. How I long to in the arms of 
It is to serve you in these hours, these last hours. Lord, our hearts are overwhelmed as parents and even believers to see this special move with the young people spoken by the angel to the prophet. And there's no way you can know what the angel said unless you heard what the angel revealed through the prophet and all these messages, books and tapes. So we thank you, Lord, for the inspiration that you give us to New York. I know the others around, oh, hallelujah, praise God, and Lord, as we feel your Holy Spirit now, I know I'm on my altar, I failed you, Lord, in many ways, many things I wanted to do, I couldn't do, Lord, oh, God, forgive me, Father, I know all that we feel that way, and Lord, as everybody has their own altar, and we feel, Lord, that you're going to drop down here now, Lord, and oh, my God, I've asked, Lord, by inspiration to recreate Lake Champion, Father, may the anointing that was there move in here, Lord, now, praise God, and Lord, cause a great, mighty revival to spark off with these young people here, amen, praise God, anoint Brother Joey here, Lord, to, in worship, and Brother Paul and Brother Byrne as they help out here, and anoint those who are going to testify, and those who are going to preach, Lord God Almighty, praise God. May the Holy Ghost that we feel here right now, may your presence drop down now, Lord God, and all our visitors and friends, Lord. May you anoint everyone in here. And Father, may you pour out the Holy Spirit. Those that are not saved, save them. Those who are sanctified and waiting for a filling, Lord God, may you fill them. And those that are filled, may you give them a refilling. Praise God in a revelation. And those that need deliverance, Lord God, may you deliver them every spirit that would hinder. Praise God. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit having free course in their lives. Almighty God, bless every pastor here, the minister, their wives, their families. Bless all that have gathered. Father, we commit this ser service this morning and tonight and right on out. And the, may it be a special prayer line. Almighty God, may the power of all heaven pour out tonight, Lord God. And this morning leading into tonight, we pray, Almighty God, and ask the blessing in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen and amen and amen. Can we say praise the Lord? The Lord bless you. Amen. The Lord smile upon you. Hallelujah. The Lord pour out upon you. Praise God. Blessing, glory, praise, his honor. Hallelujah. your brother and sister.
victory is mine victory today is mine oh i told satan get thee behind me victory happiness is mine today happiness is mine happiness today Come on, musicians. Are you happy this morning? Lake Champion appreciated his testimony and how after his testimony he met Brother Brian in the center aisle and God filled him with the Holy Ghost right there. He prophesied about himself. He said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. And that's what happened to him. So as our brother Jason comes forward, he requested victory as mine. So let's put our hands together. Oh, I told Satan to get thee behind Happiness is mine today Happiness is mine Happiness is mine Happiness today is mine Oh, I told Satan to get, get thee behind me Day is mine, one more time. Happiness is mine. Happiness is mine. Oh, happiness today is mine. Oh, I told Satan to get me behind me. Happiness today. One more time. Oh, victory. Are you happy this morning? Victory is mine. Victory, Victory is mine. Today. today is mine. Oh, I told Satan. I told Get thee behind me. Thee behind me. Oh, victory today is mine. Oh, 
Hallelujah. Can we give the Lord a hand clap this morning? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Victory is mine. Let's sing that one more time. Sing it like you mean it this time. Do you have the victory this morning? Praise God. Hallelujah. What a joyful time this morning. Isn't the harvest time joyful? Hallelujah. We've got a reason to be happy this morning. Oh, my. Hallelujah. My. The shout of the king is in the camp this morning. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. My, it's a blessing to be back here in Pennsylvania again where the Holy Spirit has met us many times before. Many times in this very room, many have been sealed and refilled with the Holy Ghost. Once more, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Once more, Father, may you meet us here. Hallelujah. I have a quote very quickly before I start here. It's on the refillings. What we need today is another refilling. Like the disciples had. Three days. Some of you are trying some of you are trying to test an experience or trust in it you had ten years ago. That's all right, but what about today? We need one for today. Today is the day. Hallelujah. The disciples, about three or four days after they received the Holy Ghost, went back and got in one accord and began to pray with one accord until the Holy Ghost shook the building where they were sitting. Hallelujah. I was at Lake Champion. I received the Holy Ghost. But I say once more, Lord, may you shake the building. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Many were there, many received, but now's the time. I'm ready to receive it this morning. I'm asking for another refilling this morning. I'm not satisfied with what I received. Hallelujah. May we bow our heads for a word of prayer. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, creator of heaven and earth, Father, your bride stands in your presence this morning, Father. Lord, we have gathered here in expectation and joy, knowing that you would meet us here, Lord. Lord, in this harvest time, for one final thrust right into the rapture, Father. Oh, Lord, confirm your word this morning. Father, may you refill me with the baptism of the Holy Ghost in fire this morning. Oh, hallelujah, once more, Lord. May you shake the building, Father. Fill and refill with the Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. Father, we're expecting it this morning. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you, Jesus. 1993, the year of Jubilee. That's what we're in. Hallelujah. This morning, I hope you come to participate. Amen. Hallelujah. Not just to sit back. To sit back and to criticize, but to enter in. Hallelujah. To be a part of it. Hallelujah. My. It's wonderful this morning.
Hallelujah. You may be seated. I must confess something this morning. After receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I've become very greedy. Amen. When it comes to my spiritual promises, brother, you better get out of the way. Amen. Praise. You're just going to sit there in front of me this morning. Brother, you better get out of the way. I might just run over you. Because, brother, I come to receive my portion. Hallelujah. Oh, that's how it should be. If that person next to you opens up that little umbrella, you can, you can knock them over. It doesn't matter. You're free this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. <laughs> my, my. Thank you, Lord. He changed my way of living, Brother Andrew. He changed my wants, my needs. He planted my foot upon a rock. Hallelujah. I know what I'm here for. I know what I was put upon this earth to do. Hallelujah. And he will anoint you for the job. Hallelujah. He didn't just call you for no purpose. You will be special anointed for the job. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something this morning. The gates of hell are shaking. You're starting to realize who you are and the gates of hell are shaking. Oh, my. When the devil sees these young people on fire with a seventh thunder revival, my, he must shake in his boots. Hallelujah. My, even the devil must hear that jubilee trumpet blowing. Seeing these young people go free. My, he's scared to death. Hallelujah, to see all these young people gathered this morning in Jesus' name, praying for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. When the Jubilee trumpet blows, the devil has no say-so in it. It's not up to him this morning. If you want to go free this morning, if you want to hear that Jubilee trumpet blow, it's up to you. It's not up to him. Hallelujah. Do you hear it blowing this morning? You were special designed for this third phase. You were special designed to live in this hour, to live a Christian life unto others with a seventh under revival coming out of your soul. You are the seventh thunder revival. We're not having a seventh thunder revival. You are the seventh thunder revival. Do you believe it this morning? My many people are saying, well, what are they having another 1906? No, this isn't just another 1906, I'm sorry. Why? Because the book is open. All the mysteries have been revealed now. You're ready. You are coming to perfection. Why? To be ready for that rapture. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All the mysteries have been revealed. What are you waiting on this morning? Receive it. Take that little book. Oh, my. Hallelujah. That's why we're having a revival in Tulsa, because we've kept our eye on that angel, that angel with the open book, with seven thunders uttering their voices out of it. That's why the Jubilee trumpet is blowing. Hallelujah. This is just not another revival. This is the bride's revival. This is your revival this morning. This is for you. Not everyone can handle the Seventh Thunder Revival. That's why you're here. That's why you're gathered here today. Oh my, each one from all around the world where the revival is struck out, bringing their licks of fire from everywhere. Oh my, to make one big great ball of fire this morning. To consume everything.
Are you happy this morning? Well, give the Lord a hand clap. Come on up here, Tulsa. We're going to sing this morning. Hallelujah. The devil is beginning to recognize us this morning. He's beginning to recognize you. Why? Because you're the same one that kicked him out of heaven. You're the same ones this morning. He recognizes who you are. Oh, my. I hear the Jubilee trumpet blowing. How could I turn back? There's nothing to turn back to. Amen? The devil has nothing to offer anymore. Hallelujah. The name of this song is I Won't Turn Back. Will you turn back this morning? Will you turn back this morning? Will you receive it this morning? Hallelujah. Keep the devil running. Keep him on the run. Hallelujah. Participate this morning. That's what we're here for. I come here to receive. Receive it this morning. Hallelujah. I won't turn back. God bless you. It's a struggle for survival We daily meet the foe Out there on the battlefield Sometimes we stand alone That's when I reach for my holy armor Pick up my shield of faith And I march on to the battlefield I take up my sword and say the mountain is high, but it's not too steep. The battle is rough, but I'm not too weak. And I won't turn back. I'm not a weak. I won't turn back. And the road is hot, but it's not too long. The enemy is here, but it's not too strong. And I won't turn back. I'm not a I won't turn back. In the face of strong we press on through the night For up and on the battlefield We walk by faith, not sight We march through persecution Determined, come with me We have to fight the good fight We have to keep the faith The mountain is high, but it's not too steep the battle is won, but I'm not too weak, and I won't turn back. Oh no, I won't turn back. And though the enemy brings forth in my soul, and though I lose my evil battles for
Amen, amen, amen. Did you appreciate the special? Is that your testimony this morning? I've not gone back. I don't want to be what I used to be. Amen. I want to be changed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's a highway to heaven. And none can walk up there but the pure in heart. Hallelujah. You feel that way this morning? As the brothers come forward for the offering. Mm, it's a highway to hell where none can walk but the pure in heart. Oh, it's a highway. As the New York choir gets ready to come forward. Well, it's a high, high way to hell, New York. None can but the pure in heart. It's a high way to heaven. Walking up the hill. Oh. It's a highway to Oh, none can But the pure in heart Oh, it's a high, high, highway To heaven We're walking Sounds mighty good well, it's a high, high way to hell. As the angels join in, but the pure at heart. Oh, it's a high, high, high way. Walking up the king, high way. believe that he chose you yes. praise the living God yes. praise God I know we're gonna go out of here different people than the way we came in here yes. the brother spoke the truth this is the year of Jubilee yes. we are in it we are it we're experiencing it because he chose me by his grace and mercy hallelujah Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, he 
today. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. The angel is here. All things are ready. Let the fire fall. Hallelujah. 
As we said at Lake Champion, and we say it here, we don't have a program. The Holy Ghost is the program. And whatever he wants is what he gets. Hallelujah. I will praise the Lord as our brother Jonathan Coleman gets ready to make his way to the platform. That's my testimony today. I see the young brothers standing here in the front. I know that's their testimony. We don't care what tomorrow brings. I could care less if tomorrow ever comes. I will praise the Lord today and forever. Amen. Why don't you lift your hands? Close your eyes. I will praise the Lord. tomorrow brings I know how we pray everybody sing now I will praise the Lord Jesus I will praise the Lord tomorrow brings, no matter what the rest of this convention brings or what happens when we get home, there's one thing we know for sure, that we will praise the Lord, Lord. Hallelujah. I pray, Lord, may you pour out today, Lord, on these your people, Lord. Oh, Lord, if I only say one word, Lord, may that one word, hallelujah, may I just step aside, Lord, and the Holy Spirit pour down, Lord. Oh, that's the main reason for this convention, Lord. That's the main reason for this retreat, Lord. Oh, to draw someone else closer to God, Lord. May there be one in the building that's to be sealed this morning, Lord. May you seal them, Lord. If there's any young person coming here in a backsliding condition, Lord, may the Holy Spirit so fill the building they may not stand here anymore, but today hit the knees and repent of their sins, Lord. That's the type of message we're talking about, Lord. That's the type of service we're seeking, Lord. Lord, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Welcome to Penn Harris. Amen. Oh, blessed be his name. Hallelujah. That song, I Will Praise the Lord, has sort of been a theme of these past few months. You know, as a young person, when they're in the presence of God, the first thing that happens, the devil starts coming to them and starts telling them that, okay, you may feel this way now, but what about tomorrow? What about when you go back to school or go back to your job? Well, tonight, today, you can say, shut up, Satan. As for now, I will praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. It feels good to be here. Are you happy to be here? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Blessed be his name. You've already been officially welcomed, but I'd just like to personally welcome you to this retreat. And the only expectation I have is that we hear from heaven once more. Hallelujah. You know, Brother Coleman was speaking before how Brother Matt Branham says it is ten times worse speaking back when he preached his message. It was ten times worse for the children of those fathers and mothers. 
And what about our day? It's a hundred times worse, perhaps. All that is out there. And so often it's so easy to get caught up in the negative and, and what's going on and, and how hard it is. But I think we, tie, we turn the page this convention. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's time to look on the positive. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Brother Brian is speaking on redemption by power. He says, you're always pointing how the wicked the worlds are getting. But you fail to see how powerful the churches are getting. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. At the same time, she's raising up, standing on the field. Oh, she's a little flock, but brother, God is with her. And young brother, young sister, this morning, God is with you. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. And she's going to triumph, just as certain as Christ rose from the dead. Amen. God's church shall never fail. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. Sure, they will be against it, but they cannot prevail. And sure, you're going to be tested and tried, but they cannot prevail. Hallelujah. The church is going to triumph through the blood of Jesus Christ to the victory march. I'm positive of this one thing, that God will have a church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. Amen. I'm so happy about that. Hallelujah. Amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise for what he's already done for you in your church. Amen. You may be seated. But the brother said, I'm so happy about that. I could personally say that I'm so happy of what I've seen in my church these past few months. Amen. Since February 28, there's been a move among the young people of New York City, and I cannot describe with words. It's just been God Himself. Amen. New York City. Hallelujah. Blessed be His name. I've seen young people, I've seen hard cases, I've seen those who are just waiting the time till they can leave the church and not have to come anymore. I've seen those people turn around, set on fire, and baptized with the Holy Ghost. And God could do the same thing for you, my brother, you, my sister. I don't care what condition you came in here. I don't care if your parents dragged you across the country to be here. You will meet God, hallelujah, when you are here. Hallelujah, because God is on the earth now, dealing with his young people. Amen. Blessed be his name. So it's time to be positive. Hallelujah. Amen. So this revival started humbly. It started with just a few brothers in the front of a church service. And hey, they got set on fire and they went back. And we had prayer meetings. You may be seated. Just gatherings in houses and tape meetings. And the Holy Spirit will fall out, fall out for five, six hours. Slay these young people on the floor till we couldn't even barely close out. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit just pouring out. Amen. Blessed be his name. And it all culminated. You're hearing a lot about Lake Champion. It was a culmination of these past few months. We all gathered together mainly from the Northeast area here in upstate New York. And Brother Jason Musgrove and his brother, Brother Jonathan, also came. And we opened with a concert and sang that song, He Chose Me. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed be his name. And the Holy Spirit just fell out, and young brother after young brother will come forward and testify what God already did to them and challenge every backslidden spirit if he wants the same to happen to you. Amen. Brother Aaron, take that step. Hallelujah. And believe me, many young people took that step, and they never turned around and they never looked back. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. And then Brother Jason, he testified, and he closed his testimony, will receive you the Holy Ghost. And as Brother Belomo gave the testimony before, he no more walked 15 feet down the aisle to be hugged Brother Brian and received the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Spirit poured out. Hallelujah. And many others were sealed, and many others were delivered. Hallelujah. That's the time we're living in now, apostolic time. Receive you the Holy Ghost, and they shall receive the Holy Ghost, and they were filled. Hallelujah. You may be seated. And then Saturday night. What can I say about Saturday night? It was just God himself pouring out. Those of you who saw the video Sunday night, you get a glimpse of what I'm talking about. 
for the Cronkite was going to preach another book of Acts, but instead another book of Acts was manifested. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we brought a change, young people, back to their parents. We brought different young people back, and they were testifying to their parents. And I tell you tonight, this morning, if you want to know what happened at Lake Champion, if you want to know what happened in New York City, you go and ask these young people, you talk to these young brothers, you talk to these young sisters, that what has God done to you, my brother? What has God done for you? And hallelujah, you will know we're talking about a changed group of people. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, you may be seated. If there's anything you get out of this message today, I want to just leave you with this, that it's still taking place. It's still happening. Amen. Why? Because the year of Jubilee, on Jubilee year, Brother Brandon says, now in this great Welsh revival that started, that was a Jubilee time for the Welsh people. They started just a bunch of illiterate people just preaching the gospel. And the power and glory of God began to fall until business men would go to work and sit down at their desk and weep like babies and close their meetings, their business. Farmers in the field would be sitting on their plows or plowing. They would stop their teams to get out in the field, rank sinners and raise up their hands to God and cry out for mercy. People walking on the roads and everywhere. Whistles started to blowing and everything else. There was a revival on. And Brother Brian says, that's what America needs tonight doesn't need a Billy Graham, nor doesn't need an Oral Roberts. What it needs tonight is the Holy Spirit moving on the people claiming the year of freedom. That's right. Hallelujah. That's what it needs this morning. Amen. You believe that? Amen. Hallelujah. It doesn't need a new organization. It doesn't need a new setup. The only thing it needs is the Holy Spirit to come in convicting power. And that's what I want to see this morning. I want to see the Holy Spirit convict every young person in here that's not living right until they won't leave this building until they're living right, to their right with God, to their right with Christ. Hallelujah. You can preach the gospel till you turn gray. You can work signs and wonders till you turn gray. Except God gets out amongst the people and goes to moving. And God is moving among his people. Hallelujah. God is moving among his people. Amen, amen, amen. And that's the way it's been. You may be seated. Since this revival has broken forth, we can barely have a fellowship or have a prayer meeting without a young person being delivered, without a young person receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Am I right? Amen. Hallelujah. Just last Saturday night, a week and a half ago, we had a service to try to get the young people ready for Penn Harris and try to get them under expectation. And we closed the meeting and down in the basement, but a Willie Goiko, but a Nat Goiko's brother, who four months ago was lost in sin and lost in the world. And how his revival broke forth, God brought him back into the church. And now he's under such expectation that he just started weeping and crying. And the glory of God filled the basement to every young brother in there was packed out in the office, packed out in the basement, and the Holy Spirit poured. And we had to try to get them out of the church. It was past 12 at night, and that's the Holy Spirit that can pour out here. All it took was one brother under desperation, one brother under expectation, and the Holy Spirit filled the tabernacle. Is there one here this morning? Is there one here who feels they can't go another day without the Holy Ghost? Hallelujah. You can receive it this morning. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated. Amen. Blessed be his name. This is not an ordinary convention, not an ordinary young people's service. This is a new day, a new time, a new turn in time. Hallelujah. For too long, we're trying to force you, come in here, force you to the altar. But now it's time for the Holy Spirit to pour out and so convict you in your heart that you cannot stay in your seat as the word goes forth until you're right with God, until you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's what I'm looking for this morning. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. It's time for forcing this over. Either you receive the year of Jubilee and receive your freedom, or hallelujah, you receive a mark in your air and you'll be eternally damned. The choice is yours this morning. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Friday night, we had a prayer meeting, and it's happy to report two more baptisms of the Holy Ghost. 
is to prove that God is still moving. Amen. Every time I get a testimony, I like to share it. There, Brother Coleman, on Friday, June 25th, there was a prayer meeting at the Tucker's house. All day long, I was so excited about it because I knew that I would leave with my portion. There was such a desperation in my heart to receive it even before I got to Penn Harris. As I was praying, I began to cry out to God and thank Him for all His promises He gave to me. I wanted to be perseverant, pushing past the flesh that was telling me that I was tired and hot. God has given me so much that I just want to give Him everything to, fully use, to be fully used for service. I pray that every door to my heart would be opened that He may come in and dwell in every socket. Revelations were pouring into me of what I was reading in His Word. But a Joey Blomo Jr. came over to me to pray for me, and his prayer was such an encouragement. I felt his spirit all over me, and I just wanted more of God. All of a sudden, there was such strength, such an assurance, such a sweet presence. And all I could do was to thank and praise his name, because I knew I had entered into that good land, where the, young pe where the people are secure and have desires for nothing that is in his earth. God is so good to me. Every time I think about his goodness, I get so happy. Hallelujah. <laughs> May God bless you, Sister Rachel Brown. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be his name. He's still working. I challenge you to say that the Holy Spirit is not here for you. He's still filling his people. It's not too late. The revival is just starting. Hallelujah. Amen. Just one more testimony. You may be seated. You know, too often young people, when it comes to receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost, they start to get depressed. They start to worry about how it's going to come and what they're going to have to do to receive it. But you have to realize that the Holy Spirit can come in so many different ways. It can be so humble. It can be so gentle. Some people are slain out and under the power for five hours. Other people, it could just be a sweet, humble experience. So don't worry about how it comes. Just purpose in your mind that you want to receive it. Hallelujah. And God will do the rest. Amen. You may be seated. Just to go quickly through this, God bless you all. I, just, I would just like to give my testimony on how I was sealed. While at Sister Pat Tucker's house, June 27th, Sister Joanne was talking, was telling me that I shouldn't be depressed about not leaving, not receiving the Holy Ghost. And that how when she was filled, she didn't fall out, but how it was really the revelation of the Holy Ghost that came to her. Well, I took her words to heart, and that night at Sister Tucker's, when Liz Brown and, and Ruth were praying for me, how I felt lifted away and really forgot where I was. I heard a voice telling me, Sarah, you can receive the Holy Ghost. Just accept it and receive him. And she was sealed with the Holy Ghost that night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. In these past few months, we have testimony after testimony of baptisms and deliverances. And I believe with all my heart that by the time we leave Penn Harris, we'll have a trunk load more. Amen. Blessed be his name. Hallelujah. Amen. You may stand as we go into the word. Amen. Reading from Genesis, the first chapter, the 26th verse. I'll also be reading from Hebrews 9, verse 11 through 12. And Revelation 5, verses 1 through 10. Amen. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Amen. Amen. And Hebrews, verse 9, 11, and 12. But Christ, but Christ being come, a high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having attained eternal redemption for us. Amen. And there's one more scripture, verses. Revelation 5, verses 1 through 10. And 
I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written, within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven, nor in earth, either under the earth, was able to open the book, need to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, needed to look thereon. And of the elders, and one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold, a lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book, and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I behold, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders to the lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hath redeemed us to God by thy blood, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hath made unto us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Amen. May God add blessing to the reading of the word. You may be seated. Amen. Blessed be his name. Hallelujah. I want to tell you a story this morning. A story of redemption. You can title this message, Seven Thunder Redemption. Hallelujah. Amen. And the story starts many, many, many years ago. It starts in the beginning of time as we know it. And in the beginning of this story, they lived happily ever after. They didn't have to wait to the end of this story. They started out living happily ever after. Amen. Blessed be his name. It was two people living in perfect harmony with each other and with their surroundings. It's also a story of a love between a man and a woman, a husband and his wife, between Adam and Eve. Also a story of love between a creator and his creation. Amen. Amen. Blessed be his name. Now, God's creation in his story, Adam, had complete dominion over the earth and all that was on the earth. Amen. I'm talking about every animal on the earth, every tree on the earth. Hallelujah. Adam, Brother Branham said, was an amateur God. Adam was God of this earth. Hallelujah. And you know why? Because Adam had a title deed to this earth. That means the earth was his. God gave him a present. He gave him the earth. Hallelujah. God held the universe, and he gave Adam the earth. Hallelujah. And on Adam's earth, there was no sickness. On Adam's earth... There was no sin. There was no fear. Hallelujah. On Adam's earth, there was eternal life. Hallelujah. There was no death on Adam's earth. Amen. And Adam would have lived. You may be seated. Adam would have lived on this earth happily ever after for all of eternity. This him and his wife. Hallelujah. Adam could wake up in the morning and command this tree to move over there and give him shade. Hallelujah. He can command a brook to flow by him that he may drink. Hallelujah. Adam was a god of his earth. Amen. And he will remain this way. Hallelujah. You may be seated. But like every good story, it must be a villain. Amen. And this villain came in the form of a serpent. Hallelujah. And his arrival injected drama into this story. And we know how this serpent deceived Eve who sought wisdom and fell through lust. Hallelujah. And Brother Brandon says that Adam himself wasn't deceived, but he willfully sinned to identify it with Eve, his wife, because of his love for Eve. Amen. And we know how the story turned into a tragedy. 
Both Adam and Eve were kicked out of paradise. They lost eternal life. For the first time, death was allowed on earth. And when death came, death invited pain and invited suffering. Hallelujah. And invited misery and sickness and doubt and depression. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. He lost eternal life and he lost his dominion. He no longer controlled the animals. The same lion that he could lead around like a puppy would now devour him if he wasn't careful. He lost all his possession. He lost a title deed to this earth. Oh, it was a dark day on earth. Amen, amen, amen. I'm sure the sun may not have shined that day. Hallelujah. But it wasn't a dark day in heaven. Hallelujah. Blessed be his name. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. You know why? Because although the creator saw his beloved creation deny his word, deny his orders, he was not troubled because he knew it was all for a purpose, all part of his plan, part of this great plot, of this great story. You know what? He knew there would be a second Adam and a second Eve. And like the first Adam, the second Adam would die for his creation. Hallelujah, would accept the sins of his creation. Hallelujah. Oh, like the first Adam, the second Adam so loved his wife that he willfully took on her sins. He was willing to go down to hell for his wife. Hallelujah. But unlike the first Eve, the second Eve would not be deceived by Satan. Hallelujah. In the latter days, Satan once again slip into flesh. This time in the flesh of your friends, in the flesh of that girl in the world, that boy in the world, you just can't seem to give up. But unlike Eve, you will not fall. Unlike Eve, you will not fall. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Oh, hallelujah. This was a different Eve. This was a different Eve. The first Eve was saved by grace. The second Eve shall be perfected. Hallelujah. The first Eve lost the inheritance. The second Eve will regain all of the inheritance, every promise. Hallelujah. Oh, the first Eve falls through lust. The second Eve overcomes lust. Hallelujah. Overcomes, hallelujah, overcomes drugs. Overcomes alcohol. That's the second Eve. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. The first Eve was caught up in our emotions and in our five senses. The second Eve looks beyond the senses into the inside, inside. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. The first Eve was taken from Adam's flesh to be different. The second Eve shall become like Adam. Hallelujah. It doth not appear what we shall be. And when he appears, we shall be like him. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be his name. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, that second Eve will not fail. Hallelujah, the second Eve will stand out in this filthy, dying world as a son and daughter of God. Hallelujah. And face everything the world can offer you. Face everything the world can offer you. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be his name. Oh, hallelujah, I don't care where you come from. You could be in the meanest, toughest city where it's dangerous to even walk out your door without being shot, but you will overcome. Hallelujah, you will overcome. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seeing. Hallelujah. But before any of this could happen, before that second Eve could come on the scene, God's great plan had to unfold. Because at this point, it was not ready. Certain requirements will have to be met first. I want you to know one thing. Even though Adam and Eve were kicked out of paradise, even though all had seemed lost, all was really not lost. Because the title deed that Adam held, that God gave Adam, never, ever, ever went to Satan. Hallelujah. Blessed be his name. 
I don't care how long Satan's been on your earth, possessing your earth, he is still a squatter. It does not belong to him. It is not his earth. It is your earth. He does not have a title to that earth. Hallelujah, it's time for you to kick him out. Hallelujah, like you did before the foundation of the world, like Brother Jason said. He'll see you coming. He'll remember what you did to him then. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed be his name. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated. That's it, these days. Oh, hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. If this hadn't happened, if Satan would have gotten his hands on that title deed, all would have been lost. All would have been lost. There would have been no hope for salvation. There would have been no hope for eternal life. Hallelujah, Satan would have had ownership of God's earth and God's creation. But by the grace of God, he couldn't take it. You know why? Because God had a perfect plan in place. A perfect plan of redemption in place. Amen. Hallelujah. And the rest of this Bible is just the unfolding of this great plan. It's a story of a struggle between the sons of God and his full squatter, Satan. Hallelujah. It's a story of struggle and triumph with the Lamb of God doing mediatorial work down through the ages on behalf of his sons and daughters. Amen, amen, amen. And the Bible tells of many victories. It tells of Noah and the ark. It tells of Moses delivering the children of Israel. It tells of Daniel in the lion's den. It tells of the three Hebrew boys. On and on and on. Hallelujah, many great victories. But despite this all, through all of this, full victory had not been met. Adam's claim had not yet been redeemed. Final victory had not come. The battle may have been won, but the war was not over. And one day that war will end. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Now I want to pass on down through time to a place in time where we reach the scene that I read about, Revelation. But Brian is speaking on the breach, page 92. And he saw one sitting upon a throne with his book in his hand, in his right hand. Think of it. Now and then in the book was a title deed to redemption. And it was sealed with seven seals. And then an angel came forth, a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice. Who was worthy to open the book, to take the book? Who was able to open the sails? Who was able to open his book? Amen. See, the angel asked it. John saw it, and he said, Now who's worthy? Let him. Oh my, maybe I'm just feeling it this way, but let him, said the angel. Let him. Here is the book of redemption. Here is the plan of redemption. Here is the only way you'll ever be redeemed, for there is the title deed of redemption of the whole heavens and earth. Let him come forward, if he will. Oh my. Now speak or forever hold his peace. Let him come forward and claim this book. Who is worthy to do it? Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. And let's just talk about that book for a moment. In that book was a complete plan of redemption. Amen. That book was sealed. On the back side were seven seals. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In that book was the claim to the earth. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. The title deed to the earth was in that book. The book represented everything that Adam had lost. Hallelujah. In that book was eternal life. In that book was your healing. In that book was your deliverance. In that book was the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In that book was adoption. In that book was perfection. In that book was every promise. Hallelujah. Oh, but there was no sin in that book. Oh, you can search that book night and day. You'll never see one word of doubt in that book. Hallelujah. You'll never see depression. you never see the word can't. Oh, I will. Only thing in that book is positive. I will be sealed. I will be filled. I will be delivered. Amen, amen, amen. No sickness. No fear. No unbelief. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated. Now you catch how important that book was. But that book was seemingly out of reach in the hand of the master. Hallelujah. 
And the problem was, not just anyone could step up to that throne and take that book. Not just anyone could come and grab that book from the master's hand. No matter how much you wanted your baptism of the Holy Ghost, no how much you long for your healing, no one could come forward and take that book. No one could do it. Hallelujah. You know why? It had to be a kinsman. The person had to be related to man. The person had to live like you live and go through every trial that you went through. Had to walk the earth and be tempted like you were tempted. That's why the angels could not take that book. Because the angels are not your kin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated. And that person had to be sinless. That person could not need redemption himself, but had to be sinless. Hallelujah. Someone, hallelujah. Whew. Amen, amen, amen. Blessed be his name. Oh, hallelujah. You. So the angels couldn't take that book. The first Adam couldn't take that book because he had fallen. No prophet, no king, no priest, no apostle, no preacher, no no one. Because all has sinned and come short of the glory of God. No one living and no one dead. And John was troubled. And John began to look for someone to take that book. And John looked across the earth. He walked to the east, and he walked to the west. He walked north, he walked south. He went to every nation, he went to every island, he went to every continent and searched the entire earth and could not find one worthy to take the book. And John was troubled, and John stepped down below the earth, and he walked around, hallelujah, in the darkness below the earth, and he could not find no one. John went up to the heavens, hallelujah, he couldn't find anyone. He looked around the throne, hallelujah, he couldn't find anyone. But there's one place he didn't look. There's one place that John didn't look because out of the midst of the throne came a bloody, bleeding lamb right out of the throne. Hallelujah. The master himself took the book from himself. Hallelujah. Became a bloody, bleeding lamb and died for John. Redeemed the world that was needed of redemption. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be his name. If John would have looked at the throne, he would not have been troubled. But John went around the world and went up into heaven and down into hell and could not find anyone. But in the throne, the master himself came out. That lion became a lamb. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, before that land stepped forward, all oh, was dark like the same day that like when Adam was kicked out of the garden. The earth was dark. All of creation was groaning and moaning. What can be done? What can be done? Eternal life was lost, it seemed. Their healings were lost. Hallelujah. All seemed to be lost. All the great prophets and all they had done and how they trusted in God. It all would seem to come for naught because the world, the title deed was in the master's hands. All seemed lost. Hallelujah. Oh, amen, amen, amen. But out of the midst of the throne, the only place the land could come from, that second Adam came, bruised for our iniquities, died on the cross for us. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, blessed be his name. Are you glad? Hallelujah, that that lamb took that book. Oh, hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. And can you imagine how John felt when he saw that lamb? Oh, but the Bible says, talk about a jubilee, talk about a time when that lamb walked forth. See, the books even sailed in heaven, the mysteries are. Say, is my name there? I don't know, I hope it is. But if it is, if I was put on a book before the foundation of the world, for the first thing that represented that redemption, come the lamb had been slain from the foundation of the world. And he took the book. Glory, but the Bible says, open the book and tore off the seals and sent it down to earth to his seventh angel to reveal it to his people. That was past as he sent it down to earth to be revealed, not to reveal, but to be revealed. Hallelujah. There you are. Oh my, what happened? The screams, the shouts, the hallelujahs, the glories of God. And they wonder why we shout. And they wonder why we scream. And all of heaven and all of earth heard John. Every place where John had searched now heard John shout, hallelujah, hallelujah. The lamb has stepped forward. The lamb has stepped forward. It was jubilee time. Hallelujah. 
So go on and criticize us. Go on and criticize us. It's not our fault you didn't see the lamb. It's not our fault you didn't see the lamb. Hallelujah, hallelujah. When Moses saw that lamb step forward, he saw a burning bush. Hallelujah. Ezekiel saw a whale in the middle of a whale. Hallelujah, hallelujah. When you see that lamb step forward, hallelujah, it's the same God you feel now. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be his name, but too many people around this world, too many people in the message have never seen that lamb step forward. Hallelujah. So we pray for them. Oh, hallelujah. Because if they did, there's no way they can stand there. There's no way they cannot help but praise their God, their Redeemer. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So today we sing a new song. Like John, all of heaven and all of earth will hear us. All of heaven will hear you in this convention. A song of jubilee. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. You know how in the Bible every 50 years a year of jubilee will come. And what does this year bring? What is the purpose of the year of jubilee? A year of jubilee restores liberty to the enslaved. Hallelujah. Every backslider serving Satan as a slave is restored liberty to that person. Hallelujah. 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 It's time to throw around your tools and leave the fields that you're plowing because it's limited time. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. That's not all the year of jubilee does. It remits debt to the indebted. That means every one of you have all these blessings that are owed you and the devil's been able to deny it for all these years. I'm talking about your healing. I'm talking about your loved ones. All these blessings which are rightfully yours, the year of Jubilee restores the debt to you. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. The year of Jubilee is a time for rest. The time for sowing is over. It's a time of rest. All the struggling down through the years is over. It's over. Hallelujah. Amen. And the year of Jubilee restores the property to the original owners, restores the earth to the original owners, the minions restored in the year of Jubilee. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And a message year of Jubilee. But the Bible says, now remember in the Old Testament, if a man lost his inheritance and a squatter came on his land, he could not hold it any longer for an annihilation from the owner until 50 years. After 50 years, the year of Jubilee came by. In the year of Jubilee, when the year of Jubilee came along, then everything went back to its original beginning again. All slaves, they went back to the original beginning. If a man was hoeing in a field and a trumpet sounded and he heard it, he'd throw down a hoe and say, I'm no more a slave. I go back to my family. Hallelujah. Everything was given back. If a squatter was on the ground, he had to get off the ground. He got off the ground because why? The legal owner was coming back. He had to give away. In this convention, the legal owners are coming back. In this convention, the legal owners are coming back. You have every right to blast the devil off your land. Just take a bulldozer and tear down every building he put up there. Tear apart his fields. Tear apart his crops. That's not his land. You burn his fields tonight. Hallelujah. I don't care how far down that building's entrenched. I don't care how deep down in your earth he put that foundation. Tonight the Holy Spirit can rip it off. He can rip it back. I've already seen it happen. I've already seen the Holy Spirit shake your earth and shake apart every foundation. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be your name. Amen, amen, amen. That's where we stand this morning. The book has been taken. The book has been taken. It's time to be like John and rejoice. Hallelujah. It's time to be like John and rejoice because you have been redeemed. You have been redeemed. Hallelujah. The title deed is back in its original owner's hands. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Hallelujah. I just want to pause for a moment because there's one thing that you got that was going on. You see, the book was taken and it was back in the hands of the original owner. And John, by revelation, saw his name and rejoiced. But that book was still closed. That means that the devil could come to John and say, well, okay, the book is back in its original owner. 
But how do you know you're in that book? How do you know your name's in there? It's still sealed. We have to wait. Hallelujah. John rejoiced by faith, but he couldn't be sure his name was there because the book was closed. Hallelujah. It was just a revelation John has. And that's where we are, many people. That book has been claimed, but there's one difference is the seals have been pulled open. And under the seventh seal, you heard bang, 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 bang. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be his name. Your redemption was complete. You know why? Because the abstract, the seventh thunder abstract, that Holy Ghost abstract came to your title deed. Hallelujah. It's not enough to be saved. It's not enough to know you're redeemed. But until you see your name and know that way back from the beginning of time, there is nothing against you, nothing against you. The baptism of the Holy Ghost makes you know that there is nothing against you. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be his name. Satan is finished. You know why? Hallelujah, because the seven thunders have been opened. And when the seven thunders open, what does it bring? It brings us, uh, hallelujah, the seven seal has been opened. And when the seven seal opened, those seven thunders uttered their voices. Hallelujah. And when they uttered their voices, it brought the Holy Spirit. When they uttered their voices, you saw your name. When they uttered his voices, it brought faith. Faith for rapture and grace. Faith for your healing. Hallelujah. Oh, the seven thunders will bring a revival. Has it brought a revival, young people? Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be his name. Oh, the seven thunders is the Holy Spirit that abstract to your title deed. Hallelujah. There is nothing against you. Hallelujah. Oh, amen, amen, amen. Just one quote. For it's the rising of the sun. Page 31. Hallelujah. Paragraph 248. Now you can get a title. See, sure, see? You can get a title to a place. But I still don't say it's yours. No, sir. Somebody way back yonder could come in and put a claim on it. So you get saved. And you believe that you're redeemed. Hallelujah. That's your title. But the devil will still try and come and put a claim on it. But when you get an abstract. Hallelujah. Listen now. That shows that everything that's ever against it is struck off. Plumb back from the foundation. Is that right? Hallelujah. Now listen. And when a man has said that he believes the word, and that when the Holy Spirit comes, it is the abstract to the title. And, when, and that gives you permission. When you have that abstract, that every bit of that belongs to you, and everything on it, it belongs to you. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. And that gives us the abstract. When the Holy Spirit comes down, this title deed that God saw back yonder before the foundation of the world, it put its name on the book of life, but was born through a man and woman and subject to sin and guilty of sin. But when I believed on it, I received the deed. But when the Holy Spirit come, it was the abstract that everything against me, whether my mother done it, my father done it, my grandmother done it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The Holy Spirit is here for you to be an abstract to your title deed. The devil can no longer make any claims on your salvation. It doesn't matter what you did, how many times you've fallen since you've been saved. When you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, that's the abstract to your title deed. And you can receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost this morning. And you know why? Because that, hallelujah, the seven seals have been opened. And you heard your name when those thunders uttered his voices. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There's nothing against you you this morning. There is nothing against you this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, blessed be his name. That's the whole Bible. It's a story of redemption. Way back in the beginning of the world, Adam walked on the earth, and the earth was his, and every promise was his, and how the devil deceived Eve, and Adam fell, and too many young people have been deceived by the devil, and have been so willing to pay rent to Satan, so willing to pay rent to Satan. Why should you pay rent when you're the landowner? Why should you pay rent when you're the landowner? Hallelujah! The devil owes you a lot of back rent, and it's time to come and claim it tonight. It's time to kick your mouth. It's time to stop him down. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Oh, blessed be his name. That's why we are the way we are. Hallelujah. Because we're too busy. We're too dizzy staring at the structures of Satan. Hallelujah. Oh, amen, 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 amen. There's no time for fooling around. A lot of work to do. A lot of land has to be cleared up. Hallelujah. A lot of cities on this earth have to be destroyed. Hallelujah. We want to return the earth back to its original way. We want to eliminate all the pollution and all the stuff and the garbage that has inhabited this earth for too long. Hallelujah. Oh, amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, blessed be his name. Not too long ago, a brother, Andrew Wicker, gave the testimony in. He says, while re reading the message once more, Lord, the Lord began to speak to me. I was reading how Samson was led into that great auditorium. How he began to think back, and he knew he was wrong. He was bound by the very nation that he was raised up to destroy. And we were raised up to destroy Satan and claim this earth. And many of us are bound by the same Satan that you've already kicked out. And now, bound. I begin to think how some young people in the church are bound by the very devil they were raised to destroy. The devil they were brought up to kill has them in chains. As I read some more, I read how Samson began to remember a time when he picked up a jawbone of a donkey and kill 1,000 Philistines. I began to think how some young people could think back to a time when they killed Philistines. Hallelujah. When they were on fire. I read how parents began to pray, once more, Lord, give me power. And Brother Brian said, Samson prayed right. He prayed, Lord, let me die with the Philistines. Let this flesh die, these desires, these emotions, these wants. Let it all die with the Philistines. Hallelujah. I began to say, if I could just die, if I could just let everything go and cry out once more, Lord. And how Samson killed more Philistines in his death than we, while he was alive. I just picture as Samson cried out to God and God stand his power. How Samson broke every chain and every wall had to come down. And this morning, I don't care what condition you are in, we're going to have a Holy Ghost prayer line tonight. But if you came here this morning because your parents told you to come here, if you came here this morning, maybe because you heard a lot of what was going on, but you couldn't apply it to your life, now is the time. Now is the time. This altar is open for you. This altar is open for you this morning. You start the convention with a good cleaning out, a good purging. I can imagine how Samson was led there, blind, mighty Samson, raised up to be a mighty warrior, a man who could carry the gates of the city on his shoulder, who can destroy an entire army with a bone. Oh, now here he was stripped, shaven by the Delilahs of this world, eyes poked out, and led into this arena to be mocked. And many of you, every day you wake up in the morning and go to school, you may feel like you're in an arena, and let the world just mock you and jest you, and you may feel as if you have no power. Oh, hallelujah. And Satan, if you're bound this morning, do you realize that Satan right now is still laughing? Satan is still laughing. And Satan, Samson stood there, and all the Philistines were around, all dressed in their party clothes. They were going to have a party that night. They were going to dance and laugh and drink and everything because the mighty Samson was being led, blind, stripped down, seemingly weak. And maybe about that time, Samson began to remember, began to daydream. He couldn't see anymore. But in his memories, maybe it was just as vivid the day he first took that jawbone up. And he realized that the same God that was with him then was still there. He had fallen, he had failed, but God had not. And he thought back to all the mighty victories. And maybe you could think back to a time when you were younger, when you had this joy. Or maybe you just look around and see others with this joy. And you want a piece of it. You want a part of it. Hallelujah, was here for you tonight. 
is here for you this morning. Oh, there's nothing against you. But if I was uninfluenced in Christ's name, I offer you the opportunity to come seek God. If happily you might find him, young people, old people, and middle-aged church members, whoever you are, the fire of God by the Holy Ghost has cleansed you in your heart until the place that you believe every word of this Bible and Christ is the living witness in your heart that he's raised from the dead. And I'm inviting you to the altar. Come here. Let us pray with you. Lean all of you then upon your own action that you are saved. As I just close this service, Lord, may you bow your heads. Lord, there's this one person here who came here and maybe their faith wasn't quite the level it should be at. Maybe they looked at the immediate circumstances and the fact that the world had blotted them out and they were chained and the world was laughing at them. May you just refresh their memory. May you refresh their memory on how the same Philistines that have them bound were just utterly destroyed by them in the past. Oh Lord, if there's any young person that's seeking a deliverance, that knows there's something they have to make right, they want to start fresh in this convention so that they too, like Samson, may be able to reach back and feel that hair that was long gone, those locks they thought would never return, that it has already returned. And they have all the power in them now to break out. But all they have to do is be willing to die to themselves. Be willing to die to their flesh, their wants, their desires. And be willing to die that you may have the victory, Lord. And Lord, there's nothing that can stop them, Lord. Because this has already happened. It's already happened. You've already taken the book. They've already loosed the sails thereof. Those thunders have already uttered their voices. It's only up to them to see their names, Lord. And for you to, hallelujah, hallelujah, to hallelujah, to bring that abstract to their title deed, Lord. Oh, Lord, I pray if there anyone there may not be ashamed to come forward now, Lord, that these ministers will be able to pray for them. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, like at Lake Champion, may they take that step this morning, Lord. May they take that step this morning. Oh, may they step out of their flesh, Lord. May they step out of their doubt, Lord. May they come to this peace, Lord, this great peace, this great joy that so many other young people have been talking about, Lord. Lord, I pray you sweep through here now, Lord. There's nothing more than I can say, Lord. Hallelujah, nothing more I can do, Lord. But Lord, may you come on the scene, Lord, and may you call them like you've already called so many others, Lord. Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord, I pray. Oh, I will pray the Lord. God bless you, brothers and sisters. What tomorrow brings, the altar is still open. I know I will pray the Lord. Oh, I will pray the Lord. Jesus, I will praise the Lord. Well, no man, doesn't matter what tomorrow brings. I know. Or if you can't get to the altar, you can make your altar where you are. Singing, I will praise the Lord, oh, I will praise the Lord, but tomorrow, I know I will praise the Lord, I We'll pray the Lord. Oh, I will pray the Lord. No matter oh, what it has, I know I will pray. 
praise the Lord. Everybody sing it now. I, I will praise the Lord. Oh, I will praise the Lord. Oh, no matter what tomorrow brings, what it has in store, I know I will praise the Lord. Oh, singing I will praise the Lord. Oh, I will praise the Lord. Oh, just let go. No man. Just let him have his way. What it has in store, I know I will praise the Lord. standing right next to you just reach out doesn't matter who's next to you it doesn't matter who's behind you it doesn't matter who's in front of you doesn't matter if mama and papa are here you have come to meet the angel and he has come to meet you take that step hallelujah let go hallelujah my blessed Savior, I surrender. Well, oh, to Jesus, I surrender. All oh, oh, to Him, I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in 
in his presence tell me who I surrender on asking you this morning Oh, have 
Hallelujah. Oh, I will shout. Oh, how. I want to thank you, Jesus. I will shout. Oh, how. Hallelujah. Oh, for he said, he set me free. Jesus Christ set me free. Oh, I will shout. I will shout. Hallelujah. Oh, I will shout. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I will shout. set me today he set me free that's why I will give I will give God all the glory oh I will give God all the glory oh I Set me, set me free, and they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint oh teach me Lord teach me Lord do you want the Holy Ghost today I will shout oh I shout out your promise Claim the Holy Ghost today. Speak out your conviction. Don't be afraid. God will answer. He is, hallelujah, brothers and sisters, whatsoever you ask in his name, he is obligated to answer you back with fire. Hallelujah. Don't let the devil tell you that you cannot ask for the Holy Ghost. Don't let the devil tell you this is the first service. And that I cannot have it today. This is the beginning, hallelujah, of many mighty services. The revival is on. It started Sunday night. Hallelujah. This is that that was spoken by the prophet Joel. That in the last days, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The angel of God is walking up and down the aisles. Hallelujah. That same presence that stood on the platform with Brother Branham. Hallelujah. That same angel that said, Storm, I resent your coming. Sun, come out and shine. That same angel is here today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, I will shout. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, my Jesus. For oh, he sent me. 
Jesus set me, he set me free. Yes, oh, I will shout. Oh, I Oh, ha, hallelujah. Oh, I will shout. Ah, hallelujah. Oh, for he sent me, sent me. Worshiping it. Keep praising it. Hallelujah. We are marching. Oh, my eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He has loosed the faithful lightning of his terrible swift song. His truth is marching on. We're singing glory, glory, hallelujah. Yes, glory, glory, hallelujah. We're singing has sounded forth the trumpet that shall never sound me tree. He is sifting out the hearts of men before the judgment seat. Oh, be swift, my soul, to answer. Be jubilant, my feet. Our car is marching. Christ was born across the sea with a glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. As he died to make men holy, let us die to make men free. Our God is marching on his glory. That shall never sound retreat. He is sifting out the hearts of men 
before the judgment seat. Oh, be swift, my soul, to rise up. Be jubilant, my feet. Our car is marching on. Oh, sing in glory. Hallelujah. Sing in glory. To greet your brother and sister. Tell them victory is mine today.
One more time with victory Victory is my heart Victory to 